Welcome to part three of the virtual exhibit, Art and Iron, focusing on the Matthews Northrop Company. This exhibit is brought to you by Western New York Heritage and the Buffalo State Museum Studies Graduate Program. This episode has been curated by Buffalo State Museum Studies graduate students, Maria Johnson, Sasha Naples, and Alexandra Dwyer, under the guidance of lecturer Noel Wiedemer. Based in Buffalo, Matthews Northrop & Company was a well-known international printing business in the 19th century. They printed maps and atlases, books, pamphlets, and more. Known for their extensive and impressive railroad line portfolios, their engravings and etchings were frequently included with their printed materials. Often, works would be published in local newspapers like the Buffalo Express. In 1823, at the tender age of 13, Elam Richardson Jewett of New Haven, Vermont, apprenticed at the National Standard, a publishing company. After moving to Buffalo, he purchased several newspapers, one of which he sold to J.N. Matthews. His printing and engraving company, E.R. Jewett & Company, was contracted by the U.S. Patent Office to engrave reproductions of inventions. A partnership with CFS Thomas transformed the printing company into Jewett, Thomas & Company. Jewett's mansion, Willow Lawn, located in what is now Delaware Park, was considered the most beautiful home in Buffalo. He has been credited for introducing tomatoes to Buffalo. At the time, tomatoes were called love apples and were solely for decoration because they were believed to be poisonous. His pet deer wandering the grounds may have inspired the creation of the Buffalo Zoo. The etching on the left was created by Matthews Northrop & Company. After emigrating to Buffalo from England at 18, James Newsom Matthews apprenticed at the Jewett Thomas & Company. As owner of several Buffalo newspapers, including the Buffalo Express, he also established the printing business, Matthews Northrop & Company. An amateur writer, he published several books. A Western New York native, George Edward Matthews attended the Heathcote School on Delaware Avenue. He worked for his father, James Matthew, at the Buffalo Commercial Advertiser, where he learned the art of typography, the technique of arranging and printing from letters and figures. A Yale graduate, he eventually consolidated the Matthews Northrop works and George E. Matthews and Company into the J. N. Matthews Company in honor of his father. An innovator and inventor, George installed a hoe mammoth double supplement printing press at the Buffalo Express, which allowed two pages to be printed at once. To make the paper more affordable, he reduced the price from three cents to one. He also attempted to create a noiseless typewriter as a member of most of the leading clubs of Buffalo, he often crossed paths with fellow member Patrick Henry Griffin. Another etching by Matthews Northrop & Company captures the allure of Falconwood. Located in what is now Beaver Island Park on Grand Island, it was a popular place for families to spend their summers, evenings, and weekends. The highly detailed image showcases the excellent quality of the company's artwork. William Phelps Northrup, nephew of Elam Jewett, owned the Buffalo Express and the Matthews Northrup Works. After the merger of Matthews Northrup Works and George E. Matthews Company, he went to work for the J. N. Matthews Company. Initially, they made geographic maps for students and consumers and eventually specialized in commercial maps, such as railroad lines. The company also made prints like this one of Lake Chautauqua, special editions of the Buffalo Express for the International Industrial Fair, and a bird's eye view of Buffalo. Beyond the Western New York region, they printed a bird's eye view of Washington, D.C., the tropical trunk line of Florida, and even a map for the peace conference at Versailles for President Woodrow Wilson. 
through all the online research, the one type of art by Matthews Northrop and Company that couldn't be found was a painting made of gouache and a blue and gray toned palette of a local landmark company called the New York Car Wheel Works. Thanks to Fred Cooley, the story of this unique piece has been brought to life. We hope you enjoyed the virtual exhibit, Art and Iron, and we look forward to providing new and interesting content for the Western New York Heritage YouTube channel. This exhibit would not have been possible without the help and contributions of the following people and organizations. Dr. Fred Cooley for the donation of the painting, Western New York Heritage for providing the project to develop and host the first virtual exhibit, Buffalo State Museum Studies Program for the opportunity to partner with Western New York Heritage under the Civic and Community Engagement Service Learning Program, the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library, and the Buffalo History Museum for providing access to their archival material digitally.